Hello and welcome once again back to Super Northwest. Today I've come to Bidston Hill, uh, which is in Wirral. Uh, this is a historic place. Uh, it's got an observatory, a windmill. There's many, many things that I can find out about this place. So let's go and take a look. Now this observatory, uh, this was actually used uh, to predict the tides for the D-Day landings in World War II. Uh, so it's such an important building this now, I believe now it's just uh, it's run by a trust and there's a couple of people living in it and stuff so it'll have to be quiet. So just behind me sits proudly on the hill the beautiful building of Bidston Observatory. Now this is a Grade 2 listed building. Now it watches over Parkwood uh, and Bidston Village. With the expansion of Waterloo Dock, the Liverpool Observatory had to find a new home. So in 1866 a new building was constructed at Bidston and it was designed by George Fosbury Lister. And the building was constructed using the sandstone dug out for the cellars. Now the move was presided over by John Hartnup, who was the director of the Liverpool Observatory, and he ran the place up until 1885, when he was succeeded by his son. Now John Hartnup Jr. came to a sad end in April 1892, when he was doing some calculations on the roof, lost his footing and tumbled to his death. Since then, the observatory's work shifted from astronomy to other things, but always around the tradition of time and tide. But what we're going to take a look at in a bit is uh, there's an old windmill which I want to go and take a look at. That's quite interesting. Now, the building's made of sandstone, so it's quite solid. It'll probably last longer than me and you. But it's a very important building because in World War II, it played a major part in predicting the tides for the D-Day landings and they had to get that right. Now sadly the telescopes aren't in there anymore because they've been donated to the Liverpool Museum. Now the telescopes were actually used uh, to calculate planetary bodies which used to give you the exact time. Now this was used uh, in conjunction with the shipping so that they needed the exact, exact time to, to, to set off and nearby there used to be an old gun which used to fire off at one o'clock every day giving them the exact time to set off now next to it there's a lighthouse uh, which is privately owned these days uh, but i'll try and get a little look around it now that used to work in conjunction with an another lighthouse nearby and when the ships were coming down the estuary the two lighthouses would line up and then that give you the exact course to take then straight into the docks either at Liverpool or at Birkenhead. So just to give you an idea of how important these two lighthouses were. So this is where we are now at Bidston Lighthouse on the hill. And this was the upper light. Now the other lighthouse was down at Liso, which was called the lower light. And they were both known as the sea lights. Now as the ships used to come in, They'd see the lights in the distance, line the two up, and then they'd be able to plot a course for the River Mersey, and then onto the port of Liverpool and the docks of Birkenhead. Now, I can just make out in the distance the other side, uh, Liverpool. So, years ago, there wasn't a lot of trees here. It was cleared because you had the lighthouse and the, and the observatory and things needed to be clear. Uh, 
But you can just make out through the trees here, I'll just turn it around the camera, show you. You can just make out there through the trees, the other side, Liverpool. I've just come round to the back of the lighthouse, the, the light bit is on the front, we'll go and take a look at that in a minute. Uh, but it looks like someone lives here now, so we don't want to intrude too much. What an absolute beautiful building that is. The Victorians certainly knew how to build them. Coming round to the front of the lighthouse, uh, you can see the date it was actually built. Uh, or I believe this was the date it was actually built. So we can see on the building here, it's got 1873 Mersey Dock Estate. So you can just make out there at uh, the top of the lighthouse. Where the light would have been. What an amazing building that is. This is a bad shot with the sun, but best it can get it. So that was a brief look at the observatory and the lighthouse. Uh, interesting buildings there, <laughs> steeped in history. I love all that. Um, you've got uh, a windmill round here somewhere. Let's go and find it. So I'm not sure where the windmill is. Uh, I've just asked the local guy there. He says, follow his path down here and we'll, it'll bring me to it. So apparently it's somewhere down this path. This is the quickest way. But if you just look over there, You've got a massive drop. It looks like there's been a fire of some sort down there. Ah, there's some benches up there. Let's go and, go and have a look on them. Let's see if we see if we can see the other side of Liverpool. Well, I've worked my way up to a, a better vantage point, and you can see for miles around at the top here, uh, you've got a better view of Liverpool and the observatory as well. There we go, there's the two big bad boys there, used to have telescopes in, sadly no longer there now. What a stunning facility that is, what a stunning view this is, wow just look at that. So if we take a quick look across the river, you can see Everton's football ground and then across Stanley Park we've got Liverpool's football ground. Now in one of the docks uh, it looks like there's a, a military ship, not quite sure what that was on the day. Then we've got uh, the beautiful Live buildings, stunning that place is. And then next to that, we've got the most famous Radio City radio station. Uh, we, then we've got the new cathedral, which is the Catholic Cathedral. And the move you can see in the distance there, we've just got the old Anglican Cathedral. Now, while I was at the top, at the summit, I come across this strange post. There was no markings on it, on the top or around. I wasn't too sure whether it was a sundial or a fountain, but I've done some research and it's actually a distance marker and this is what it would have looked like. And it basically shows you the distances to other cities around the northwest, close to the area. Now these were more likely calculated by the observatory and I seem to remember something when I was younger, in a place called Otterspool in Liverpool, on top of a hill, having something similar, which is the other side of the Mary. So there's actually been a mill here since 1596, which is years ago, 500 years ago. Um, now, it was very hard to access it by cart, apparently um now one night there was a massive storm it was blowing a gale and the windmill started rotating that fast it caused friction inside burning the flower it set the whole place on fire it destroyed the whole building and then it was replaced with what you see today now this has been restored quite a few times uh 
and it's open now and again sadly today it's not open and there she is what an absolute beauty Now the current building was built around 1800 and it was used as a flour mill until around 1875. Now with the rise of more industrial ways to mill grain, windmills like this became abandoned. But this one was one of the lucky survivors thanks to the Birkenhead Corporation and donations from the local population. So this hill was once littered with flagpoles and what this was, the flagpoles were owned by the shipping companies over in the port of Liverpool. Now how it used to work, when one of the relevant uh, company ships came in to the bay, they would raise that flag to tell the company that the ship was going to turn up and then they could get the dock ready to unload the ship. Now there was 58 flags all in all, 49 of them they belonged to the shipping companies, but the other nine were used to warn of enemy ships. Now, bear in mind, 220 years ago, we were still at war with France, the Napoleonic Wars. Now, the system became a little bit short notice for the port of Liverpool, because it was getting busier. So what they did, they built another nine signalling stations all the way up the coast to Holyhead, and this made it quicker for the signal to get to the port so they could get ready in time for the ships. Now this outgrew itself after a while and they replaced the whole system with one long cable, giving the port of Liverpool notice of a few seconds. So historically, such an important place this is. With the rise of the windmills in 1594, which made flour to bake bread for the local population, now these two buildings behind me, the lighthouse and the observatory, they were actually built later on, late 1800s, out of the sandstone from the rock. Now, the importance of these two buildings, the lighthouse used to guide ships in, uh, keeping them away from the sand flats in the estuary and the Mersey. And then the observatory, well, that really was important because it not only helped to discover the longitude of the place, which helped the port of Liverpool, but it also predicted the tides for the D-Day landings, which is just amazing when you think back of it. Now, I believe there was tunnels in this spot underneath this hill. Now, that's for another video. I'll go and try and find out something about that and discover these tunnels. I think it's further over, uh, but I think that's for another day. But once again, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.